So you may be wondering why we've decided to bring Jaguar's new I-Pace electric crossover to the ferry that runs across Strangford Lock just outside Belfast. Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first and foremost is that there are some brilliant, brilliant driver's roads on the way down here, and that gives us a good chance to test out the handling and the ride. But secondly, just over there, there's an enormous uh, tidal-powered electricity turbine, basically a gigantic windmill lying on its side under the water that gets turned around by the very strong tides that run up and down the lock. So it's really really just a way of proving to Danny Healy Ray that yes, electricity and water can mix, yes, electric cars can safely drive through puddles, and yes, Danny, you're an idiot. So, what's an I-Pace? It is Jaguar's first ever fully electric vehicle. It sits on a completely new platform. It is designed only for electric power. There's no range extender, there's no hybrid version, none of that. And I have to say, it's pretty excellent. Now, it should be because it costs €85,000, but then again, that's cheaper than its biggest current rival, the Tesla Model X. That said, it's smaller than a Model X and you can't have it with six or seven seats like you can with the Tesla, but I think we can forgive it at least part of that because this is a really gorgeous interior and it's really well made too. Now, I've been driving this all day on very give and take roads, lots of bumps, lots of twists, lots of turns. There has not been a single squeak, rattle or any other noise coming from the cabin, unlike the last couple of Model X's I've driven, which both rattled like uh, sacks of old spanners being thrown down the stairs, frankly. This is a really, really tightly constructed car. Jaguar has been very good at build quality in general for the last few years, so I think that has carried over to the I-Pace. I'm not 100% sold on the way it looks. It's kind of the meeting point, the three-way meeting point between a crossover or an SUV, uh, a hatchback, and maybe even a bit of an estate in there somewhere. It's kind of cool, though. Maybe that's just because it's one of the few fully electric cars currently on sale. Maybe that's just because it's a Jaguar that's fully electric. But I'm just not completely sold on the styling. It, it might grow on me a bit. I do like the cabin, as I've said, and I certainly like the overall range. Now, Jaguar says that under the new WLTP uh, economy and emissions test, it will go for 470 kilometres on a single charge. Now, that sounds just about right, because when we got in this car, it had just over two-thirds charge and was showing 220 kilometres to uh, needing to plug it in again. And it seems to have stayed pretty well consistent between the distance we've covered and the distance that the computer says is left in the battery. So I think that give and take, when it's fully charged up, you're probably going to get around three, somewhere between 350 and 400 kilometres on a full charge, which is pretty good going. Now, I have no doubt that that will become more problematic if all of your mileage is on the motorway. Motorways are still a major, major issue for electric cars, even the ones with the big batteries. But we shall have to wait and see on that score. There's not been enough time in today's test drive to get it on a long motorway haul and see how it copes. Hopefully, it will cope well. It should do, because when you put it in dynamic mode, uh, and let's face it, it's a Jaguar, you should always drive it in dynamic mode, there is very, very strong brake energy recuperation. It has that sort of one pedal feel that you get from the BMW i3 and from the new Nissan Leaf. So you do tend to be able to claw back a lot of extra battery power just from normal driving, which is quite a nice thing to be able to do. And like the Tesla, it has I'm sorry to use this uh, this terrible pun, but it does have electrifying performance. It's not quite as quick as a Model X, in fact it's significantly slower, but you will still be able to scamper to 100 kilometers an hour from standstill in just 4.8 seconds. Now that's pretty rapid by anybody's standards, and it feels more rapid from inside the car because you get that instant electric response from the motors, one for the front wheels and one for the back wheels, uh, when you stamp hard on the throttle. It's a very very satisfying thing to do. But what's really good about the I-Pace, and probably it's the first electric car that we can really say this about, is it's truly satisfying to drive. There's lots of grip, there's good steering weight and good steering feel. When you chuck this thing into a corner, it feels really good, really enjoyable. It feels like a proper Jaguar. It is a proper Jaguar, I guess. Now, 
there are some limitations to that. Sometimes in really, really fast, hard cornering, you can get a slightly odd response from the nose, which is maybe the front electric motor trying to compensate for what you're trying to ask the car to do and for trying to overcome its weight, because this is quite a heavy car in spite of the, in spite of the significant amount of aluminium that's in the structure. The other smaller issue is that the ride quality is very, very firm. Now, the trade-off for that is extremely good, stable, solid body control when you're cornering at higher speeds. But around town, at low speeds, it can get a little bit thumpy, a little bit bumpy. Unfortunately, this seems to be more or less endemic to electric cars as they have to find a way to control the weight of the batteries and the motors, even though those are mounted low down in the car, which is where you want the weight to be. So it's not cheap, and it is a little bit small on the inside compared to its most significant competitor, uh, against which it's also a little bit slower. But this, for me, is a better car right now than the Model X. It's prettier for a start, it's much better to drive, and overall the quality levels seem to be a lot, lot higher. I think this is probably Jaguar's best car right now, and I think up there with the little BMW i3, I think this is probably one of the best electric cars you can buy right now. If you want to go electric and you have the money to spend, I think this is the way to do it at the moment.